hey, come on in. Let me show you around. So it's been a while, right? So we did this abandoned house. We bought it. You didn't know about that we bought it. Yeah, I had no idea. And then we got it. And, and then, then we walked it and did a tour. And you were scared. And I was terrified. What do you think? Oh my gosh. So it's been about a year and a half of this full abandoned house transformation. If you didn't follow the series along, we bought this house. It was abandoned. We bought it in a state sale and we transformed it. And the abandoned part was a real descriptive word for it because it was basically hoarded up with everything that was here. The previous owner passed away and then we really, I think, did this house justice. Yes, you guys saw, there was couches left. There was like, right here in this mudroom, there was a, a random chair, maybe from the 60s. Yeah, so there was a chair. This was originally, they had just a coat rack here, I think a cabinet on top and that was it. It was kind of it was almost- like this, an open, I believe, cabinet, right? It was like an open cabinet, yeah. no doors on it. It was kind of this closed space. I told you it's an abandoned house. There's a chair just randomly in the closet. <laughs> There's a screwdriver that there, is. but that, you know, that's just, that's essentially assets, really. So what I kind of came up with, I knew, I knew I wanted to put a door that has light, natural light that's coming into it. So this did it before it was this creepy little, almost looked like a closet door. Well, it was awkward because when you'd walk into the house, it, it felt very closed in, very and dark. dark. Yes. Yeah. Not to mention the smell really <laughs> helped with that. It smells like old people. The smell was a, a whole nother thing. So natural light, and then I wanted an accent piece because you're looking at this for the fr front door, right? So we have this little cleated back wall, natural wood tones, plenty of storage for all your shoes and whatnot, a nice bench that's kind of contrasted with everything, plenty of storage. So essentially we took a, a weird, awkward space and we made it functional and also like an accent piece when yes, you walk in. Yes, and it's a true mudroom, which is amazing because that's what everybody wants in their home, whether you have kids or you're living, you just want to have your shoes put away, um, all the extra scarves and hats and whatever. Yeah. It's perfect for the storage and it looks beautiful. Beautiful. Let's move on to the living room. So the living room, the backdrop was actually really kind of dungeonous and creepy. It Do you remember the projector? There was, was a, a projector. projector coming down. There was one right there here. There was a... A little corner uh, TV thing. Yeah, like a media yeah. console or whatever. So this is the living room when you walk in. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a projector mounted here, which is cool because I, I could use another projector. You could definitely use another projector. So this is a gas fireplace, which is actually kind of cool. Daddy. Yeah, what do you think, monkey? What is in here? Down there. What is even... Oh! Oh, check <laughs> this out! <laughs> these could, these could be classics. Whatever it already still had this bench looking thing. Uh, we tore that out. Turns out there's a vent behind it. It was just concealed. Um, got a brand new stone to give it a cool, warm, farmhousey kind of look to yes. it. Yes, I feel like it's got that cottagey kind of vibe, which goes with the rest of the house. Absolutely. Gave the red brick a little heat treated uh, paint on it to kind of make it look modern and crisp. This is a gas fireplace. Um, and I think it really did it justice. We built some cabinets on the side to put all these little trinkets. That's more your world of <laughs> trinkets. Yes. And I think it's perfect because it adds a little something um, on the sides of the fireplace where you can put all your decor to just give it more character in the living room. Yep. Couple of cabinets. These are not built by me. We just buy them at Home Depot. Got custom countertops on top and matching hearth. By the way, that's a word that I just learned last year that hearth? it's called the hearth. <laughs> Uh, I kept holding hearth, hearth, and I couldn't figure out what it is. Is so it it's, hearth or hearth? I think it's a hearth. Because hearth and hand. Oh, so here we're, we're going to be fighting. Maybe it depends on how you It depends. How you Let us know. It. What do you think? How do you pronounce it? <laughs> hearth? So, so, and then obviously there's a picture here, but I built out the section, put electrical there. So somebody that would be buying this house, they would put a TV there and it has access. And in fact, how low the ceilings are, you could actually put a pretty decent TV in here. And I was just going to say, it's the perfect uh, size when you're sitting on the yeah, couch. It's not too high. It's not too high. You're like right at eye level. So it'll be yeah. perfect for a TV. Over the past year, we've been executing our dream, which is to purchase and remodel a home that's outside of our personal home. But with limited funds, it's difficult to do. Well, that's where Figure HELOC comes in. Whether it's revitalizing your home, consolidating high interest debt, investing in education, or fueling the growth of your business, a HELOC empowers you to return aspirations into realities. As you live in your personal home, and over time it increases in value, you build up equity in it, a great strategy is to leverage that equity to invest in more home improvements in your personal home, like a pool or a deck. Whether you're planning a home renovation project, consolidating high interest debt, or funding your dream vacation, Figure's home equity line of credit can be the key to making it happen. For most HELOCs, people go through their personal banks, where their traditional HELOCs usually have variable interest rates that can change over time. 
Figured HELOC provides fixed rates, making them the number one non-bank HELOC in the U.S. The process is very easy and simple. They're 100% online. Applications can be filled out in just minutes with funding for your next project, debt consolidation, or education in as little as five days. With Figure HELOC, the average homeowner could save up to $80,000 in HELOC over a cash out refinance that you would find at your traditional bank. If this summer you're looking to do some backyard home renovations, buying that plane you've always wanted, or a horse, with Figure HELOC's competitive rates, they can help you do that. So if you have some ideas for your home or other goals, click the link in the description below and find your rate at Figure HELOC. Thank you, Figure HELOC, for helping us accomplish our financial goals and partnering with us on this channel. Now, let's get back into this video. Let's go. Apart from that, new flooring, new baseboards, and I think when you have low ceilings like this, which is about seven and a half feet tall, as opposed to eight, nine feet tall, uh, putting beefier uh, baseboards, like these are five and a half inch uh, tall baseboards that are three quarter inch th thick, it almost, and the window trim, it creates almost like a, an elongated effect to it. It makes the room look bigger, it for does. sure. Made it I'm impressed at how much furniture fit can actually fit room. in here yeah. this is really cozy i I'm, I'm a big fan of how everything turned out here not to mention yeah. new windows and all that stuff it really did the room justice all while also adding more recessed lights to just make this room light airy welcoming uh and not to mention all the natural light from a big window so when the lights are off it still looks just feels light night natural now. light coming mm -hmm. in versus right. before everything felt a little dark all right let's move on to the dining room Oh, and by the way, uh, this, I didn't even consider this could be a cool space for like a, an additional seating. Yes, like maybe if you're putting your shoes on by the front door, you have guests. It's perfect. Put your shoes on real quick and go out the front door. I will say no matter how much transformation you do to a house of planning ahead of like what's a functional space, interior designers like Irina or Stagers, when they come in and they create this little decorative thing, it really makes you go like, I never considered that. That's actually functional. So you could sit here, put your shoes on, or maybe you have guests over, you're watching the Super Bowl or whatnot, and you have additional sitting in the back. I feel like our kids would be sitting on here. <laughs> so, absolutely. All right, so moving on to the dining room. The dining room was really kind of weird because the, this sliding door was not here. The guy had the single pane windows on it that he oh, kind of- Oh, I forgot about that. So this is the kitchen. Oh my gosh. Come look. Come Another look. couch. We have two couches. <laughs> There's nothing else that's bothering me. It's the layout. I thought I could take this out first, but then I realized this is an entryway to the attic. He kind of custom made it. So it was a single door that opened up and then he put just two single pane glass on the sides. Uh, all of that had to come out. We enclosed it more, filled it in with all the studding, drywall, and then put a nice sliding door in there that's modern, lots of light. Uh, I'm really surprised that I had it centered, that a potential it's, dining room it's table. It's perfect. You know what I remember is the dining room felt really small. And it was cramped. We were both talking about how could you fit a table here? There's the walkway, like where would you be able to walk? And now, somehow, you made it happen. It, <laughs> it's, it's like, this is a six person table and it fits. That was the hardest part in the dining room. You go like, well, what's the orientation? Would it be a round table, a rectangle yeah. table, going this way or that way? And to be honest with you, Whenever you start on a project, sometimes you can plan ahead for it, but other times the project kind of almost tells you what it wants to do with it. And I think, and that's the most like hippie thing I've ever said, but I think- It uh, tells you what to I do. I think it really worked out. Yeah. So coming on over here, this is probably the most, uh, I think, impressive part is we used to have this enclosed space that started from, I think here, and it was a wall. On this side was a pantry. And then the wall continued and there was a makeshift door that was put in here. It was enclosed. It was not load bearing oh, or anything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Because it's been open for so yeah. long, I like forget how tiny and like enclosed everything I know. was. It just all right. Coming in here. Oh, we don't have light hooked up yet. Oh my gosh, I almost fell. Careful. Ready? We'll kinda you have could to... definitely bury a body down here. Well. It's like, it was so weird, like there's no, the kitchen was tiny, the dining room was tiny, and you have this door that almost goes like, where does that go? And you open it and there'll be stairs, you go downstairs, and that was the unfinished basement. And it, honestly, it can't be a finished basement because how low the ceiling is, so all the plumbing is going through, the furnace is there, the water heater is there, all the access we to plumbing. We walked down it, if you can remember, and yeah. it was very... <laughs> Scary. Yeah, it was creepy. It oh. felt like very dungeonous, but there was like dirt everywhere and so there was a chicken coop. Our there. whole yes, there was a chicken coop. <laughs> our whole idea was to still have the access to it, yeah. but to keep have it hidden. And I think this setup is perfect um, in order to hide. 
I will say it could have been more perfect if we could relocate this hidden yeah. door somewhere mm -hmm. else. But the reality is, is it had to be in this plane because there was load bearing barriers all around. So you put it, it in the hallway, yeah. you put it in the hallway and you can't open the door and access it. And so this was kind of like the only thing you're left with. Because it's still, you know, out of the walkway. Yeah. So it's still, it, I feel like it was the best option to keep it where it is. That's one of the things I learned as projects go is that there's, sometimes you want the perfect solution, but you have to work with the two worst solutions and kind of go with it. Yeah. And so unfortunately you have to keep the access here, even though I would pay any amount of money to have it re relocated somewhere else. But we had it hidden and here's the best part or the biggest part is when it comes to selling the house, if you have a house tour, somebody sees that, that door in the floor and you go, well, I get it, but how would we even conceal it? I think it would push a lot of people away. Yeah. Um, when they first see it because it's like first of all what is that and then they open it and they're like, okay This is weird that it's in the kitchen. Yeah, but then we came up with this idea. Actually you came up with this idea of the door Yes, but no it, oh, of how to of, hide it. Oh, yeah, yeah. and and the, the the designers and the stages They did a fantastic job where yeah. you you're not hiding anything from somebody because they have to do home inspections when you purchase a home but you want to give the buyer an idea of how could you conceal, conceal it, it. And I think they did a great job. There's a runner here. There's a nice little, I, what would you call this? Like a, almost like a, a, a it's bar? It's like a credenza. You can make, you can put a cabinet here. You can put a, you know, even longer if you wanted yeah. um, to extend it. You can do a built-in bar if you wanted. There's just so many options. This was just what we went with with staging. I think it's perfect because you can use this, yeah, as extra storage yeah. in here. And then um, the countertop is like an extra bar. It's perfect. Or whatever. I think it's perfect. That won't deter anybody from wanting to buy this home because you're like, this is functional. They have an idea now. And too. I'd actually do this because you have this extra space yes. here. And you still have the walkway here, yes. which is great. So moving on to the kitchen. And uh, I'm really impressed how things turned out. And you constantly go like, I talk hard. about this kitchen all the time. First of all, look at look how big it is. We can stand in here and have so much room. So this is the kitchen. Um, oh, come here. It's okay. It's okay. So the oh, plan here is going to be hopefully knock down that wall and then wrap around the cabinets here. And I want to do an island here, like a Wait, small Wait, knock island. down which wall? Well, I want to get rid of all of this here. And then I want to wrap this kitchen cabinets all the way across and then put an island right here. Gross. <laughs> And then a dining room I literally room table. can't. I'm pulling my nose. It smells so bad in here. Okay, well, let's what, get a... So where, what, like, dining room? Where that chandelier's hanging? Okay. Probably over so there. So a little, like, round yeah. dining room. Yep. Yeah. I mean, sure, it's got great potential. Yeah. So this is the pantry. It smells so bad. You can make it, yeah. This isn't bad. <laughs> this isn't bad. I do want to keep the pantry here, so we'll... we'll you could legitimately, because this is a 1,250 square foot home, so it's less than 1,300 square feet, and you could actually host a big party and have a, like Thanksgiving, walking around, you can have yeah. a bunch of family in mm -hmm. the kitchen and you don't feel like you're running into anybody. Yes, and that was our, our I think the kitchen is such a monumental part of the house. Yeah. That's where most people gather. So we wanted to create something that's, yeah, big enough to like have multiple people in it without feeling cramped, because if you remember, <laughs> When we first saw the kitchen, I mean, we were walking like here. Yeah. Yep. And there was cabinets there. There was, cabinet, there was like a little peninsula coming This actually that was way. still there. So the orientation of the sink is still the original orientation. Mm -hmm. You added the window. Out of the window. There was a, a, a larger window, but we can close that space more, put more cabinets just to create more storage yes. space. I think the fridge was here before. Remember us opening the fridge? That was disgusting. <laughs> I will never forget that in my like. I whole actually life. dry heaved. You live did, on and then video. Harper was there, and she was. She like, was. Yeah. She didn't want to come to this house for a long time. Yeah, she did it. She was actually scared of this house because of that. So oh we have. Oh my gosh! Does the low ceiling bother you? Oh no! Oh no! Come look at it. No, I don't want to. Come oh on. my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! <laughs> I'm dry heaving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it smells so bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so bad. Harper. Okay, <laughs> now I will say when I was originally buying this house, my plan for it was to open the space completely. And if I was going to show you here is when I first came into this house, I wanted to get rid of not only this door here, but this wall. <coughs> so you would walk in from the living room and the kitchen would have a big island bar here, the most open space you could imagine. But going back to the project tells you what it wants to do is we could not get rid of this wall. This is a load-bearing wall. Mm -hmm. the, the ceiling joists are resting on this wall. 
And yes, modern day applications, like, well, let's put a beam on there. That's true if your ceilings are high. These are would not come down very even high. more. So your yeah. beam would come down to even here, and now you're going back to making the space look even smaller. Yes. I think it came down to utilizing the space the best way we can. Yes. And I think we achieved it because it initially, even with the wall, we still wanted to do an island. Yep. But we figured we can either do a tiny island and add maybe two chairs, yes. two bar stools, or have a, a peninsula. longer peninsula and add, what do we have, three? You could probably even do four. Four, depending on the size. Uh, depending on the size of the chairs, yeah. And I think it was the perfect uh, choice for us because now you have all this space and all this counter space. And I say. will say, originally, when we couldn't do the island here in open space, I wanted to do an island here, but what it would mean is in order to have adequate walking room on the left and the right side, have to be really small. the island would be probably like four and a half, five feet wide. And um, the peninsula is probably not the first choice on people's list because you want to open things up, but I think it's the most functional uh, way to actually accomplish that. Yes. And because you created a bigger space here, I think it. a lot of times when you have the peninsula kitchen, it, it kind of makes the kitchen it look does. smaller. But in this case, it somehow makes it look bigger, yeah, I yeah. think. I think so too. Yeah. So I built all of these cabinets by hand. Uh, I didn't buy them, so I was able to save a lot of money on that, but it also means a whole lot of work. I think you crushed it with the color selection. Yes, we wanted something not white, because we always go with white, creamy white, white, but we wanted it to be like a little neutral toned down. So this is actually Benjamin Moore oil cloth. And it, with the lighting that comes in, the natural lighting, it's such a beautiful color. At night, it looks different than it does during the day, yeah. but it has that just greenish gray that absolutely yeah. looks beautiful in here. Now, this is where the refrigerator would go. So mm -hmm. I built this little pantry right door right here. So you can put in an outlet in the cabinet. So you can have your appliances in there um, and it's just added space. And before, we used to have a window in here. I don't That's know if you remember. That's right, the window. It was like this nook yeah. with, didn't have like a cabinet. Yeah. And then a window, yes, yeah. you're right. And one of the fears you had is by me getting rid of the window, you're like, are we still gonna have natural light I in here? I thought we would lose a lot of natural light. Uh, I was nervous about that, but it is, I think the doors helped, the double doors. The double made. doors and that window yeah. definitely helped bring a lot of natural light in here. We also had a drop ceiling in here, which we had to continue a little bit here, but we got rid of over the, the top of, uh, cabinets and uh, I'm really proud of how things turned out on this I, one. Yeah, it's, I love it so much. Yeah. I always talk about it because it's beautiful and I mean, it's just huge. Yeah. You Which would is, have never thought it It's hard to say that yeah. with a 13, 1200 square foot yes, home. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, let's move on to the hallways here. So originally we had, um, it was a, a like open, what? like a laundry closet, but it had it like a, a curtain. It didn't even have a curtain. I don't think so. I think it was just open. This okay, is the laundry, laundry room or laundry closet that will be here. I'll have to make like doors over doors. it and stuff like that. And we'll see how that comes. It's kind of out. narrow too, the hallway. Yeah, it's a 1961. Yep. Now keep in mind, this is a very narrow hallway, but we wanted to make sure that you can actually hide your washer and dryer. So I think these, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're, they're uh, bi-folding doors, but they're on a uh, barn door hardware style application. So these all pivot out. And if you come in here, You'll see that this is a cool little uh, folding table on top, just for mica countertops. We saved a little money. Black shiplap all the way across. Floating shelves, LED lights underneath, just to create an accent look. It still has a light fixture that I put up there, some recessed lights, so you have plenty of light. You can actually hide your washer and dryer. And I think this still also creates another cool statement yes. piece. And did this have a counter? No, no counter. Yeah. So we Countertop is a huge must have, I feel like, with laundry spaces. So when you have your washer dryer here, to be able to fold laundry, put stuff here, even having the shelves up here for the detergent, everything you need, yeah. is like so functional, which everybody knows you need that yeah, <laughs> in a laundry space. And I love, yeah, the shiplap. It's such a fun accent. The lighting here doesn't make it feel like so dark and cold. Yeah. I know that's one thing about laundry rooms. You always, it always feels a little dark yeah, because always, we don't have windows. You want to avoid that place. Yes, right? but to have the lighting shining down and you got this accent lighting on the shelves, I think that really helps too. Yeah, so it almost makes you want to be here and fold laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to fold laundry? <laughs> so moving on to the bedroom. So this is probably the biggest bedroom in the house. So we kind of thought this would be the primary bedroom. The last bedroom here. Okay. Well, there's some clothes in here still. I feel nauseous. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so sad. I don't know why. That makes me sad. It's all right. You should definitely keep the curtains on all the. You don't. I don't think there's a lot of female appeal in here. Like, 
which is interesting. The curtains, they're like, well, there's a, there has to be a female here. Yeah, look at this little fan. But then, are you allowed to say master bedroom still or no? We'll just go with primary. We'll for go now. With primary. <laughs> so a lot of natural light. Um, great section set up here. This is about a queen size bed. Uh, I don't know if a king would do it justice with big side tables. I think if you could go with a king, you just have smaller nightstands, which if you don't mind, yeah. then if you want a bigger bed, it would still fit here, actually. It worked out great. The closet spaces, people are always saying how it's plenty of storage for closet space. Um, the house actually didn't have access to the, <coughs> the crawl space, not a crawl space, but the attic access. And so we put a little access through the, oh, the I didn't know inside because I didn't want it to be sticking out yeah, in the wall there. That's a great spot there. for it. But because it's only a single bathroom, three bedroom, single bathroom, I decided to add a pocket door that leads us into the bathroom. Because if this is the primary bathroom and we couldn't add an extra bathroom, uh, we decided just to the make next best, next best thing. Make a big bathroom and add access to it that if you if it's just you and another person living here or you have roommates, you still are able to access it conveniently and still be a shared space. Yes, I think this is a really cool feature. Knocks it out of the park. So it has the double doors here, yep. get in through this side. Yep, and originally the bathroom access door mm. started here and this was enclosed and we had two linen racks on the side. So just actually linen closets on the side. Yes, that's right. So by knocking those out, yes, you're getting rid of storage space. And I know people have been destroying me. It was like, oh, where are you gonna put all the towels? Well, make the bathroom bigger because it's the single bathroom and then have the storage be in here. Put it in the cabinets. Put the it, cabinets. Hang yeah. it up there. You put can it, hang the towels. Put it in the laundry. Put it in your room. It doesn't matter. But I think a big bathroom, if you can't add another bathroom, is probably more important. Yes, absolutely. And you can even add, if you really wanted, like, in the bathroom to put your towels, you can add a little, like, shelf thing here if you wanted, or shelving above the toilet. I, I for, will like, say, towels. there was a part of me that wanted to put recessed shelving in here for the towels, yeah. but that would get into the space of the yeah, laundry. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's not that hard just to put shelving over here and just make it cute with the towels. You hear that? It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Anybody can put up a shelf. To say. Just watch my uh, Instagram video. <laughs> so the original layout here was the toilet was, uh, I think, still in this relative location. Hey. How's the shower look? Oh, look into there. What is that? Is that hair? Oh my God, it's hair. Uh, well, okay, it's a little hair, we all have it. <laughs> we'll clean up, it's getting a nice little cleanup. <laughs> I'm not cleaning this house. There's a toilet behind the door. Okay, that's weird, but. And then, but then there was a wall coming up and then there was a bathtub in here. So by ripping that all out, keeping the toilet there and then relocating the shower, here's the way I kind of looked about it. Who's more likely to buy a small house that's three bedroom, one bath. Well, it's probably gonna be their first time homeowners, a new couple that's starting a family, yeah. or retirees. And this is exactly what I was thinking is, not a lot of people are using bathtubs to soak Apparently in. nobody takes baths anymore except me. Get a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got rid of it. <laughs> right, and so by putting, doubling down on a larger shower, I think it creates that space to be more desirable. So yes, you don't need to have 20 people in here, but you could. Well, have, you could if you wanted. You could have twenty friends come over and take a shower. Like, <laughs> added a small little window here. We used to have a nice big window there, but if this is because you gotta keep in mind that's the front of the house. Yeah. And you don't want anybody to, you know, accidentally looking and seeing something they shouldn't see. A little looky loo. So by putting like a diffused window in there, privacy window, still create some light in here. And because we have the pocket door here, I think the most ideal orientation would have been creating a smaller shower, but having a double vanity. Mm. Yes, and some people reached out and said that'd be probably more ideal because they have a similar layout. Yes. But I really wanted that giant Big shower. shower. yeah. And I, I think, think it's worth it when you see the shower. Yeah. It, and it adds such a statement. Yeah. I love that too. With the, the, the open look with the glass. Absolutely. Uh, custom built vanity by me, countertops, uh, subway tile vertically completely throughout. And I think that was your recommendation. I think this came out awesome. All new trim definitely helped yeah. for sure. We try to keep it pretty simple and neutral in here just because it is a smaller space. So we didn't, I didn't want to go too dark. I think, I think light tile and, uh, yeah, everything down here, it just makes it seem lighter and more open. My last minute game time decision was to add this Wayne's coating thing like in the that. back. Cause it, it was felt like it was missing something. It was a little bit bland. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I know what you're saying. So 40 bucks is not 40 bucks, about 300 bucks is what it would cost to do that. And I think you that, went from 40 to 300. Well, I said the wrong thing, but 300 bucks is roughly to do that. And I think that was a perfect game time uh, decision. Yes. And yes. 
I'm really it happy adds so much character. Out. I love it too. For sure. This is a beautiful color of the vanity as well. And to be honest with you, I don't remember the stain. Is that this I used. my stain? No. My signature stain? Maybe. Maybe. I have a signature stain now, so well, I'll give you the credit. I think on I that. gave it to you. I'll give you the credit on that. Moving on to the rest of the bedrooms. They don't have any furniture, but these are small bedrooms. So I anticipate one of the bedrooms might be an office space for somebody. Yeah, it's a 1961. So yeah, this Classy. is one of the smaller living bedrooms. Uh, they're roughly yes. around the same size. Maybe the other one's a little bit bigger, but... You can still put a bed if you need it. Or yeah. a kid's bed, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I said, if they're retired people, they probably have a spare bedroom for friends coming over, grandkids, or if it's a newlywed company, a family that's starting up, you could put a crib in here, a twin bed, and I think... Could be anything, yeah. Work. Office, workout, room, I whatever you want. I can't stress this enough. The new windows almost create this like... Almost like when you wear sunglasses in the sun, it creates it's this like, like grayish yes. tone. It, 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 it did an awesome job, not to mention you're seeing a great landscape backyard, which let's go check out. Yes. All these weeds grew in very fast since last time I was here. I mean, great size. It's a big backyard. That's about it. Yeah. Come check this out. This is funny. Come here, monkey. I like the big trees. I feel like at one point this is probably really pretty. I saw Google like, Images. Like, look at the steps and the stones. Like, I'm sure at one point. I saw Google Images. It looked kind of nice, like yeah. pretty lush green. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's a great, definitely a great size. Yeah. The fact that when you walk in, you see the statement piece on the back. You see the cool colors of, of uh, plants. You see a giant, giant 10 foot tall pergola. Uh, it's roughly around 10 feet by 20. Uh, a lot of people give me crap and saying, why did you make it so tall? <laughs> Bring it cozier. And maybe they're right. But also when, like it. when you have a claustrophobic space like seven foot tall ceilings inside the house, you want to have somewhere you can come out and feel like you have this endless room. Yes, and it's a really big backyard. So why not elevate it even more if you can? So going out here, we used these Aspire pavers. These are, they, it's like if you can assemble Legos, you could put these down. Uh, that video was great. I think I, we called it like the easiest pavers you'll ever do. And they are, they're, they're not heavy, they're light. You just slap the grid down and stack these on top. Uh, they came out great. They actually are more it. comfortable they're... to stand on barefoot than concrete. Yes, yes. They have like almost a softness to There's them. There's like a cushioning to them. Yeah. It's not flimsy and not squishy, but it's it's got more like, it's easier on the ankles. If yes, you like you know cement feels a little like rough. Cold on and the, hard, yeah. Yeah, on the feet. This is not like that. Which is um, awesome. The space here turned out amazing. The furniture lays out perfectly. You want to entertain here, you can put a big farmhouse table and have dinners out here. You can just set up furniture like this and just entertain friends. Maybe even like a gas fire pit that could Beautiful. also work. Right I think here. you could, it's so big, you could do even a small table and a section for yeah. patio furniture if you wanted. Absolutely. It's just big enough to do it like anything. My know? whole thing here was like, let me make this to be the most entertaining space possible. So we brought a hot tub, put it over there so you can't argue about not having you know, a bathtub to soak in, um, put some planter boxes around that have an accent to them and it kind of encloses the space more. Um, put a sandbox, because again, if you think of the future clientele, do they have grandkids? Do they have little kids? Maybe they'll entertain there. And we do have, they have this, a cat. They have a cat, a giant litter box, if you will. <laughs> a giant litter box, if you want. Uh, the landscape turned out incredible, I think. Um, you know, we got great plants. These are low irrigation, evergreen kind of stuff. So once they take root, you don't really have to manage them. Um, I kind of created this oval kind of radius perimeter to just create dimension within the space mm -hmm. as opposed to keeping everything square. Yes, yeah, I think it adds some character. That's a garden box, right? That is a garden box, okay. yep. Um, and then if you're wondering the dirt mound in the back, when, when we were excavating all the <coughs> front lawn, because we're planting all new grass, we needed to move that dirt somewhere. So we moved it here with the idea or the assumption is that you could put uh, like a decorative retaining wall put bricks we didn't do it because i think the next owners need to spend some money on something yeah we we were maxed out <laughs> yeah we would be completely upside down on the house if yeah. we just kept adding yeah. anything and everything to it but uh there was already a mound there so we just made the yeah. mound a little bit bigger and the next owners hopefully yeah. can do something cool it's a great big backyard i feel like there's a lot you can do with it yeah mm -hmm. all right let's go check out the garage uh, they have so many vintage golf clubs Whoa. here <laughs> in the back here this is going to be quite a cleanup for you, babe. Let's, I have to build a shop first. So glad I don't have to do it. Any of it. So I don't know what was here. I think this is kind of like the back end storage. Oh, this is kind of cool, actually. Yeah. You can store like a lot of stuff. We can store a lot of things. Wow. Uh, that's the not a light fixture. I think those are, here. oh, no, those are all screws that the guy kept. 
No, right there. Where? Is that not a light fixture? Oh, it is a light fixture. You, maybe you can repurpose that. He, he kept all the newspapers. All right. So this is probably one of my favorite parts about this house is this kind of multi-use flexible space. And it's going to get a little echoey in here, but you have glass doors that are French doors that is staring directly in front of this patio space. So were there I'm doors here before? Uh, there, was no, there was there was one, one single door, door in the corner okay. there. This was more of a storage. And then I before. remember that was one thing you wanted so bad is to add the French doors for the extra lighting in here. Exactly. Like and I said, it's going to be outside. it's going to be a little echoey in here, but. This was originally just a catch-all space uh, that was divided. It was made up of every little piece of leftover material that he had for a dividing wall. So obviously made sure everything's structural. This space, the way I'm seeing it, is to be a cool office or a gym, right? Yeah, or be whatever you want. You got natural light coming in. You have power here. This is a concrete slab. And so you can either have a workout space, you could put an office in here, open up these French doors, work from here, entertain over there, put a ping pong table, a pool table, whatever it is. This is cool because even if you didn't want to entertain and maximize all the space like that, this could be a storage unit. I mean, yeah, I have it could really here. be anything. It's multifunctional. That's one thing everybody always misses in their house. Like we need more room to put everything. Yes, yes. Because if you park your car right. and it's a small garage, where do you put everything else? Exactly. Moving on to the garage here. This was the biggest probably tackling project we've ever done here. This was the first thing you did too, huh? Yeah. So everything was exposed here. Uh, not enough ceiling joists. And so we made sure everything was up to code on the structural part. Every wall got rebuilt, all new electrical. And the biggest problem is we used to have an electrical panel here that the guy originally built this garage by just literally cutting off a section of the wall where the electrical <laughs> meter is, flipping it. I mean, it. what else would you do? So the meter was on the inside of the house as opposed to the outside and then ran everything, which is not up to code. You can't do that. Is so, it like uh, also dangerous? I'm sure of it, but illegal for sure. Yeah. So we contacted electricians to come out. They killed the power. They put a meter main on the other side. They put uh, a new uh, sub panel to go inside the house and we were able to enclose everything that nothing is no longer illegal and nothing is no dangerous. longer dangerous. <laughs> I remember you had a lot of problems with the electrical. Yeah, a lot, lot of, uh, a lot of water damage too because he just didn't anticipate for drainage. He just kind of cut things off and then just flipped them over. And uh, that's the hard part is you're fixing other people's mistakes. And uh, when you have somebody like me coming in, now you're just ripping your hair out because yes. you're like, we could have just done this right the first time. You're having to, yeah, rip apart everything they've done and then build it back up versus just building it back up. It was definitely scary. I remember this garage in particular gave you a lot of trouble. Absolutely. But raising it's, the roof. It's structural. It's the ceilings are all equal length and height. Uh, the roof is not caving in anymore. Um, I think this turned out to be a, a really, I think, a, a there's a lot that I had to put on my plate yeah. to figure out. I actually it's watched- It's almost good you, got, you did it first to get it out of the yeah. way because it was such a pain in your butt. I, I watched my first videos of this section of either getting the trash out or fixing the walls and the roof. And uh, there's a part of me that's like, if I went back in time, I'd probably tell myself not to take not on to this project. It, yeah. but, uh, you, but here we are. You eat an elephant one bite at a time and yeah. that elephant was eaten. He was eaten and it was chewed up. Chewed up. So the front of the house, obviously all new siding, all new windows, all new trim, all new roof, all new paint, gutters, because they didn't have gutters and it developed a lot of problems there. Uh, built a nice floating deck, which I think is a good statement. This piece. was such a elevation to this front porch area. Yeah. I feel like when I first came and saw it, it made it look so much bigger here. Yeah, yeah. What's the word we always use? Grand? Grand, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely one of the most repeatable <laughs> words. Uh, added some posts here for accent, uh, a lot of wood tones that really made the space look really modern and welcoming. Obviously, new grass, new sprinklers, new landscaping. And uh, I'm really proud because this is, for the first time ever, is actually a statement on block of how cool the house looks. It looks so cute. I just I just love the way the front looks and especially now with the grass and the landscaping. Yeah. It changed it 100%. A 180. Yeah. We did it. We, we did, did it, it, baby. That was a bad high five. Let's no, do it again. <laughs> there we go.
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video, following us along for a year and a half of transforming an abandoned house to be the most welcoming house for any family. We're really proud of it. It's on the market. We're already under contract, and uh, we're excited to see it to go to a new home. Be sure to check out next week's video where we see what we're embarking in next, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be really cool. So that's it for us this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye.